Have you ever wondered about the existence of markets that sell something other than goods or services? Welcome to the unseen world, a world that trades not in commodities, but in lives. A world that exists not in the shadows but in plain sight. A world that is as real as it is chilling, the Bulgarian Roma market. In the heart of Bulgaria, nestled within the Roma communities, lies a market unlike any other. It's a market that deals in futures, in destinies. But these aren't the futures of stocks or bonds, they're the futures of young girls, often virgins, who are sold into a life they didn't choose. You might ask yourself, how big can such a market be? The answer, regrettably, is far bigger than any of us would like to believe. Hundreds, sometimes thousands of girls are sold in this market every year. Each one a story of lost innocence, each one a testament to a tradition that refuses to die out. The roots of this market stretch back generations. It's a tradition steeped in a culture that views women as commodities, as items to be bartered. A culture that values virginity not for its sanctity, but for its price tag. It's a practice that has endured, not because it's accepted, but because it's hidden, cloaked in a veil of secrecy and silence. But to truly understand this market, it's important to look beyond the numbers. Behind every statistic is a face, a name, a life. These are girls, as young as 13, 14, who are thrust into a world they're not ready for, a world that robs them of their childhood, their dreams, their future. This is the unseen world of the Bulgarian Roma market, a place where innocence is lost. It's a market that trades in despair, in lives shattered before they've even begun. It's a market that exists not in the pages of a dystopian novel, but in the harsh reality of our world. It's a market that until we choose to see it, will continue to thrive in the unseen. What is the price tag attached to innocence in such a market? This question may seem unthinkable yet it is a reality for many young girls in the Bulgarian Roma market. Let's delve into the figures. The average selling price for these girls, believe it or not, hovers around a few thousand euros, the highest price ever recorded, an astonishing 50,000 euros, a sum that most Bulgarians can only dream of. On the other end of the spectrum, the lowest transaction has seen girls traded for a mere few hundred euros, a price lower than a basic smartphone. Now you might be wondering, what determines these prices? The answer lies in a combination of factors, each disturbing in its own right. Age, virginity, and beauty. These are the three primary drivers of this dark trade. Age is a crucial aspect. The younger the girl, the higher the price. It's a perverse system that values innocence and youth above all else. This is where the concept of purity comes into play. Virginity is highly prized, often confirmed by invasive and humiliating tests. And the price? It skyrockets for these so-called pure girls. Beauty, as subjective as it may be, is another determining factor. Girls perceived as more attractive fetch higher prices, reinforcing harmful beauty standards and objectification. These prices, as outrageous as they may seem, are a reflection of the demand in this market. It's a grim reminder of the lengths people are willing to go to exploit innocence for their gain. And while these numbers might be hard to comprehend, they are a stark reminder of the reality that these girls face every day. Each euro represents a stolen childhood, a shattered dream, a life forever marred by exploitation. In this market innocence has a price, and it's a price far too many are willing to pay. Who are the people willing to pay such a price for a human life? Let's delve into this dark corner of humanity, where individuals, driven by various motivations, participate in the buying of young girls in the Bulgarian Roma market. The demographics of these buyers are as varied as their motivations. Data collected over the past few years reveal that the age range of these buyers stretches across several decades. Many are middle-aged men, between 40 and 60 years old, although there are also younger and older individuals involved. Their socioeconomic backgrounds are equally diverse. Some are wealthy individuals, using their excessive resources to exploit the vulnerable. Others come from more modest means, scraping together every bit of savings to procure a young bride. Nationality too plays a significant role in this grim market. The majority of buyers are Bulgarian but there are also individuals from across Europe and even further afield. This international involvement speaks to the reach of this horrifying trade, crossing borders and disregarding the sanctity of human rights. So what drives these individuals to participate in such a market? Many are motivated by a twisted sense of tradition, viewing the purchase of a bride as a customary practice within their community. Others are driven by power and control, seeing the acquisition of a young bride as a demonstration of their dominance. 
Then there are those who justify their participation with a perverse belief in rescuing these girls from a life of poverty. They convince themselves that they are providing a better life, a gross rationalization that only serves to perpetuate the cycle of exploitation. Whatever their motivations, these buyers are the lifeblood of this market. Their demand driving the supply of young brides. It's an uncomfortable truth, yet one that needs to be brought to light if we are to tackle this issue effectively. It's a chilling reality that there are people who see no wrong in buying a human life. Who sells their own flesh and blood and why, you may ask? It's a question that weighs heavy on our conscience, and it's one we must grapple with as we delve into the lives of the sellers in Bulgaria's Roma bride market. These sellers are often families, families living on the fringes of society. Stricken by poverty, they tread the thin line between survival and desperation. According to the World Bank, around 60% of Bulgaria's Roma population live below the poverty line, that's over half of the community living on less than $2 a day. But why do they resort to selling their daughters? Many of these families see no other way out. With limited access to education and employment, the dowry from a bride sale often provides a financial lifeline. In some cases, it's the only way they can afford basic necessities like food, shelter, and clothing. Now imagine being in their shoes for a moment. Imagine the anguish of a parent forced to commoditize their child's innocence, just to keep the rest of the family afloat. The heartache is palpable yet they feel they have no choice. Societal norms and traditions play a crucial role too. The practice of selling brides is deeply ingrained in the Roma culture. It's a tradition passed down generations, often unquestioned and unchallenged. This cultural inertia adds another layer of complexity to the issue. However, it's essential to remember that not all sellers are the same. While some may feel trapped by circumstance and tradition, others may be motivated by greed and indifference. It's a spectrum that reflects the depth of human frailty and resilience. In the end, it boils down to a heartbreaking choice. A choice between survival and morality. For these families, survival often wins. And so, the cycle continues. A cycle of poverty, desperation, and the sale of young brides. It's a grim reality that underscores the urgent need for change and intervention. For these families, it's a choice between survival and morality. And survival often wins. Is there hope for these girls and what's being done to end this horrifying trade? Let's dive into the efforts being made to combat this shocking market. Non-governmental organizations, government bodies and international organizations are all pulling together to put a stop to this inhumane trade. For instance, NGOs are actively working on the ground to raise awareness of the issue and provide support for the victims. They're rolling out educational programs to change societal attitudes and beliefs that perpetuate this trade. They're also providing vocational training to these girls, equipping them with skills that offer an alternative to being sold. On a governmental level, Bulgarian authorities are implementing stricter laws and penalties for those involved in this trade. They're increasing their surveillance of such activities and are working towards enhancing the enforcement of existing laws. Internationally, organizations such as UNICEF and the European Union are working tirelessly to put pressure on the Bulgarian government to take more decisive action. They're also providing funding and resources to support local NGOs in their work. Now let's talk numbers. Over the past decade the number of reported cases of girls sold in this market has seen a decrease of about 20%. That's progress, but it's not enough. The challenges are immense with deeply rooted cultural norms, poverty, and a lack of education being the primary roadblocks. Despite these challenges, the fight against this market is not relenting. The work still needed is substantial. More resources, more awareness, more education, more enforcement, all these are required to fully eradicate this market. The fight against this trade is a marathon, not a sprint. It's a complex issue that requires a multifaceted approach, but every small victory brings us one step closer to the finish line. The fight is on, but it's a long and arduous journey to end this horrifying trade. 